How you guys doing today? Uh, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Dr. Sean Steinsmith, chair of the accounting working group, and I'm thrilled to have with us today on the June podcast, Kel Canty, who is the CEO at Veriday, a firm basically trying to help folks working in accounting and in the industry so to get a better handle on how to weave in blockchain and crypto into their current operations. But I'm going to now hand it over to, to Kel for a introduction of himself and his firm. Kel? Hey, Sean. Great to be here today, and I appreciate everyone that's uh, listening. I um, want to go ahead and give you a Brief introduction on myself. I've been in the uh, fintech and financial reporting space uh, from a computer science and engineering of systems for that uh, for a while. Built and sold a company that uh, is now part of Fair Isaacs Corporation for credit reporting and decisioning. And uh, then got interested in Bitcoin back in 2012 where we uh, uh, did a startup that actually ended up uh, assisting in one of the world's first uh, Bitcoin audits on one of the world's largest cryptocurrency payment processors. And that's uh, right here in Atlanta where we're located and that's BitPay. Uh, we've evolved from there um, and added in accounting, business level accounting for uh, integrations and as sub-ledger to QuickBooks uh, Zero, as well as uh, we work with NetSuite on a global basis. Uh, and then the, the most recent thing that I, I kind of wanted to mention because it is timely now, uh, due to uh, COVID and everything, uh, all the uh, issues uh, surrounding that uh, and the extended tax deadlines that are now coming up in, uh, I believe, a little bit under 30 days right now. Um, you know, the July 15th tax filing we've recently launched, and this is our first year with legible tax. Um, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that more as we go forward. We did that in collaboration with Thomson Reuters. And uh, we're, we're very proud of that. And uh, that's kind of where we are with the uh, tax and accounting platform for crypto assets. Nice. So, so it honestly sort of strikes me that you're really sort of hands on elbows deep in this whole conversation um, uh, that I know I'm hearing more and more about as you are, I'm sure, that really sort of all of us have have moved beyond sort of the what is blockchain, how does it work at a basic level, what is Bitcoin, and then how those two concepts interact. And then now we're sort of moving towards, okay, fine, how do we actually operationalize this information and these tools inside our our firm and and uh, and uh, you know, Cal, probably the most basic question that I'm asked quite a bit, and I'm interested in your thoughts on this, is, okay, fine. So I have a customer, have a client, or I'm trying to get some new business, but the customer or client or the, or the you know, client I'm trying to land wants to pay me in crypto. Um, so if you could summarize the top two or three things that, that any enterprise that's trying to take payments in crypto can do to make that easier, what are those? Well, I would say definitely uh, that should be uh, an option for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, specifically the more payment methods that are available for someone to take, the better the chances of taking in um, uh, the payment and, and getting that client. Uh, the other thing is as we see a global supply chain, I know several companies in order to uh, work better with uh, international customers, or uh, clients uh, as well as suppliers are turning to crypto powered um, payments in order to make that happen. So I think uh, the ability to, to use crypto um, and again, there are, there are certain um, capabilities out there that are unsurpassed in terms of speed of payment and then also with stable coins, which I know you and I have worked together on a couple of uh, <laughs> Wall Street uh, group uh, uh, documents and primers on that uh, is is really something that um, you know I believe and we believe can revolutionize uh, the world of payments on a global basis as things go forward. And uh, if you're if you're not looking necessarily for stablecoin or you're also looking at someone paying you in another crypto, there's a couple of different ways that that can happen, and uh, you can actually have that set up to where they can pay you in crypto, uh, and then it turns into fiat, so there's no volatility risk. And nice. uh, um, I, I would suggest that, you know, we've seen people start off that way, uh, getting paid in crypto, and then uh, that gets turned instantly into fiat. So there is no, uh, 
cryptocurrency risks there for the crypto. And then as they see the um, value of cryptocurrency, maybe they want to pay somebody downstream. Um, they want to participate more in the ecosystem. Um, some of these payment processors will allow you to change the percentage. So if you got paid, you know, a hundred dollars, maybe you keep 10 or $20 worth of the crypto in its native form, turn the rest into good old us dollars. Um, but then you can start working with it. So there's a, there's a lot of optionality. Um, everybody talks about the volatility, but with stable coins, particularly that is no longer, um, you know, a negative or, or a problem with that. Um, and then also there are certain payment processors that will help kind of uh, bootstrap you. You can start receiving crypto as payment, but you actually get funded and settled in, in US dollars. And then you can kind of turn the dial and uh, get some crypto to start uh, participating more. So I think it solves a lot of things and particularly with uh, digital. Um, you know, I just read a news report around uh, the fact that change is very scarce now due to a lack of uh, people participating physically um, mm. in commerce. And, uh, you know, I think some of us may have seen with the early discussions around the CARE Act that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, digital dollar is now being strongly considered um, by the United States government as a way of, uh, you know, producing something that uh, has less friction, uh, greater deliverability, and is natively digital uh, to supplement any physical cash that we uh, might be using that, you know, obviously is a vector for uh, transmission of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, and uh, absolutely. So it's honestly uh, sort of uh, appearing to me that really if, if I'm running a firm, a business, or if I have a client who's running a business and they're interested in sort of getting paid or paying in crypto, there are a handful of, of sort of different ways to go on that a path, right? It can be, you know, straight crypto. It, it could be a you know, sort of halfway point with uh, being instantly converted from crypto into fiat. Or as you had mentioned, there are also services out there that sort of let companies get uh, get primed almost and then, you know, wrapped up in dollars and then have that crypto happen in between. So, so there really are, it's evident to me, a whole suite of, of, of options out there for anybody who's interested in sort of getting more involved in this ecosystem that, that you know, range from really a sort of novice sort of introductory application to more comprehensive tools. Yes, totally agree. And, um, you know, the, the way that that happens is exactly as you said, there's more options than, than people think of, uh, you know, somebody like, um, a bit pay that you can start off with 100% USD, then then change that over, or other services as well. And then uh, I think a lot of people aren't aware that um, you know we have a business accounting package that uh, integrates with QuickBooks and Zero, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, they don't they're not necessarily aware that there are uh, you know emerging tools from ourselves and some other great players in the space. Um, that can help them with the accounting and the blocking and tackling, as I like to say for that. So uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of optionality there. And uh, obviously with the pure digital nature of it and the global nature of it, um, you know, I, I look forward to greater adoption, particularly in the stable coin area. Yes, yes, absolutely. And Kel, I, I don't know if it's uh, modesty on your part or the fact that you're just tired of of uh, covering it, but there was a huge uh, press release just last month, May of 2020, that Verade had just partnered up with a few other industry sort of high flying companies, uh, Algoland and blockchain.com. And I was wondering if you could give us some of the you know, insider information as to sort of how that went down and sort of how that's, you know, uh, working so far um thanks and i appreciate the reminder i, I you know <laughs> it's hard to get out all the information on on crypto and what's going on uh particularly uh it's been you know a great uh, uh period for us we've we've worked with uh both of those firms uh uh for people who don't know it i actually think of this in an interesting way because uh blockchain.com actually has 48 million uh worldwide uh, global uh, wallets uh, for wow. blockchain, different currencies and everything, and are actually headquartered out of Luxembourg and have a major presence in the U.S. as well. And they're kind of one of the OGs in the space. They've been around. OGs. 
original <laughs> link. Yeah, um, I love it. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's funny that uh, we actually put that out together because, you know, Algorand and Blockchain work together and we work with all of them. So we decided to go ahead and put out a, a, a triple dose uh, press release on that. But um, as I was saying, the uh, blockchain is, you know, global and has been around uh, for a while. They were the first um, non-custodial Bitcoin wallet and now are 48 million. They've recently launched an exchange and they're kind of, they're kind of taking uh, their, their next push forward uh, in, in domination of the markets. Um, but then also, if you think about from one that has been around for forever, on the other side, Algorand is one of the uh, leading next generation blockchains. So it doesn't have the slowness um, that maybe a Bitcoin has. Um, you know, Bitcoin might take six confirmations and take six hours. Um, you know, whereas Algorand can do millions of transactions at Visa MasterCard speed uh, with sub-second confirmation. So it's interesting that you've got the, the new generation kid on the block with, with Algorand who's making huge strides on global, um, you know, currency. Uh, one of the great things about them is that they actually launched one of the world's first uh, central bank digital currencies. Um, I think the very first one that a country is actually issuing their native currency on the Algorand blockchain. Wow. as well as um, in Europe, uh, they're being used for payment processing. So um, you've got the, the newest, uh, latest, um, you know, moving forward blockchain, along with an exchange that, uh, you know, has been there around for a while and now is, is making a, a renewed push out as well. So it's neat to think about we're able to service with our platform, um, you know, ones that have been around since the beginning and then also the very latest one. So we work with them for internal accounting uh, as well as we, we have some thoughts that, you know, if we're handling the Algorand token and uh, other things and we can do this with the entire organization, then we can also better help uh, their clients and people that use their services uh, in the areas of tax and business accounting as well. Wow. So, so all, all of the, uh... You know, all of, uh, you know, that sounds really interesting and I would say quite fascinating, but I do want to uh, come back to one topic that you had mentioned, this idea of a central bank issued um, crypto asset, sort of if, sort of if you could um, provide some context to our audience here as to so what that is and then which country actually is already doing that. So the central bank digital currency is where you would simply place the, the countries or a version of the country's um, currency as issued by the central bank without having a commercial bank in the middle um, directly on a blockchain digitally for uh, the ability for people and businesses to use it in a very uh, seamless friction free way. And the, the Marshall Islands are the ones that have uh, pioneered this. There's others that are in the making right now. And um, uh, the digital yuan is not very far away. Uh, I believe it's in the matter of months before the Chinese government is looking to start issuing digital yuan. So that's something that perhaps uh, here in the US we might be a little bit behind on. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it concerns me and some other people in that, you know, all the advantages from a global standpoint of having a digital currency backed by the central bank um uh is something that we haven't quite um, made the leap forward to with the uh, um the discussion here in the u.s though the, like i said the covid uh discussion around having digital dollars um for other reasons as well as the ones that i mentioned uh has helped with traction in that regard no i mean and uh i think that really sort of as this whole blockchain space continues to develop, I would say that really we've we've moved from this, you know, Bitcoin to asset back coins or stable coins. And then now we are almost coming full uh, back around, right, to sort of trying to merge the idea of the benefits of, of the blockchain with the backstop or the guarantee of a actual governmental entity. So. I know that I'm personally very interested on this topic and I'm sure you are also. So I'm really interested to see how this all plays out going forward. And so I did want to ask, right, sort of this whole you know, conversation around, you know, uh, crypto assets being issued by, by governments, better accounting, reporting, all of those opportunities, right, and the benefits of doing so. What are the biggest challenges um, on a on the ground basis to 
encourage clients and firms to adopt using crypto? And then how do you address those challenges, doubts, or those uh, questions out there? Uh, I think I think to to me is is kind of a there's two main things. One is education, um, mm -hmm. and that's simply an ongoing process. And I I think it's happening slowly. And I think the acceptance. I mean, if you look um, also here in Atlanta is backed, which is a uh, kind of a, a, a spinoff from ICE, uh, the Intercontinental Exchange, the people who own the New York Stock Exchange. When you have that and then the CME and other people doing futures and products based on Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, that kind of penetrates uh, everybody's brain and it, and it goes, wait, this is real, this is happening, this is staying mm -hmm. around. Um, it's, it's something I need to definitely look into and it's, it's not a fly-by-night thing that's going away. So the solidity of that adoption um, really helps in terms of educating people. And then the other thing is something that, you know, we're, uh, directly addressing is, okay, this is real, but um, how do I go about um, accounting for it and doing that blocking and tackling? So the tool set, um, which our legible platform uh, assists with along with some others, um, you know, is, is, you know, giving you the ability to have that bank statement for blockchain, wherein you don't have to deal with these 18 decimal points that you can have the fiat representation that you can look in QuickBooks, you can look in Zero, or you can easily file your taxes um, by being able to utilize uh, the right tool set because um, there's a lot of things dealing with uh, the digital and crypto assets that, um, you know, like I said, 18 decimal points. There, a lot of the traditional systems don't handle that. So, you know, uh, the new breed of tool sets um, helps in that. And then I think those two combined are, are going to lead the way. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. And to uh, sort of wrap up our conversation here now, I'm gonna put you on the uh, hot seat and, uh, and ask you that if you had to make, let's say one or two forecasts for blockchain crypto asset uh, trends for the rest of 2020, what are those gonna be? Well, my, my, my number one uh, is currently uh, decentralized finance. So DeFi mm -hmm. is taking uh, it's, it's taking off like you wouldn't believe, particularly, I mean, we're in, a, in an interest rate environment where people are looking for ways to uh, have their money earn money. And uh, DeFi is particularly good at that. Um, I think it could turn out to be the um, killer app. Uh, if you think about it, I just saw a news article that uh, based on gas usage, which is kind of a transaction fee in the Ethereum mm -hmm. network, Okay. Uh, that today, uh, you know, we've recently done the busiest day ever um, and that the, the growth of decentralized finance where people can participate with tokens and earn interest, they can make loans. It's a fascinating area. And I think it can displace certain parts of traditional finance in terms of loan making and interest bearing accounts. And I would say that the evolution and adoption of that is going to be the number one killer app for that. Um, and I think that's my one and primary one. The, the other thing is I think we'll get a little bit better regulatory clarity. Um, obviously the October 19th um, uh, guidelines from the IRS there um, are, are helping. And, you know, we've recently uh, adopted those within legible tax that we've collaborated with Thomson Reuters on. And then the, the other thing is, um, I think people are still grappling a little bit with what's known as the travel rule. And I think once we're, uh, you know, past this a little bit, those two things, the IRS guidance and the travel rule guidance are gonna lead to um, a reassurance among all regulators and people that are used to using regulated products that between those two implementations of the new tax, and the travel rule uh, that uh, more confidence is going to be put in. So DeFi, um, as well as uh, the new IRS guidelines and the travel rule guidelines are, are pretty much going to, uh, I think, set us up for launching forward in 2021. Great. And, and I'm totally on that same page with you, Kel, hoping for some more guidance, some more clarity to help sort of uh, reassure individuals and institutions that are not on yet the blockchain crypto uh, bandwagon. And so, uh, Kel, I thank you uh, for being on the podcast with us this month.
Thank you, and I really appreciate it. If anybody wants to contact us and uh, I'd love to discuss this and, and talk about what we're doing, uh, I'm available at kel at verity.com, or you can just go to our website and, and express interest at verity.com. It's V-E-R-A-D-Y. Thanks. All right, Kel, thank you so much again. Thank you. Cheers.